Hello everyone. So today we'll talk about some beautiful patterns that we find all around us. For instance, take the arrangement of petals in this beautiful sunflower. It's very pretty, right? Do you guys like eating pineapples? I love pineapples. While eating pineapples, we're always so focused on enjoying the taste of it that we fail to see the beauty that is created by the pattern of just a slice of a pineapple. Let's take another instance. Have you guys heard about the pyramids of Giza? It's one of the seven wonders of the world, right? Take a look at the arrangement of bricks in this pyramid. It's stacked so neatly, right? It's, it's stacked in a very beautiful pattern that creates this whole shape for us. There are many more such instances where these patterns create beauty in the world that we live in. These patterns are also present in numbers, but we don't often recognize or observe them. These patterns are what make the study of numbers so interesting. In fact, these number patterns can also be observed in real world patterns. Let's bring back the pyramid here. In this pyramid, let's try to analyze the arrangement of the bricks. So let's start with the lowermost arrangement of bricks in this particular pyramid. So let's remove the rest of the pyramid and have a look at the at only the lowermost arrangement of bricks. Now if I look at the lowermost layer, I can see that there are three bricks in that layer, right? So in the lowermost layer, there are three bricks. Now in the next layer, I can clearly see that two bricks have been added onto the left hand side and onto the right hand side, right? So there are four new bricks that have been added in the second layer. So in the second layer, there are seven bricks, right? Let's move on to the third layer. In the third layer, I can again see that two bricks have been added onto the left hand side and two bricks have been added onto the right hand side. So there were seven previous bricks, right? Which were in the middle. Now two have been added to the left hand side and two have been added to the right hand side. So in the third layer, there are 11 bricks. So on, if you go on calculating the number of bricks, you'll find that in the next layer, you'll find 15. In the next layer, you'll find 19. So the number of bricks in every layer increases by four, right? Because we add two to the left hand side and two bricks to the right hand side. So now if we try to represent this pattern in terms of numbers, what is the number sequence that we'll get? So we'll get the number sequence three, which is the number of bricks in the first layer, then seven, which is the number of bricks in the second layer and so on, we'll get the numbers 3, 7, 11, 15, 19. So now this is a number series, right? This is a number sequence. So in this number sequence, the pattern is that the next number is always four from the position of the first number, right? So there's a difference of four between all the subsequent terms of this number pattern, right? So like this, you can visualize a lot of number patterns. Let's take another example to visualize a couple of more number patterns. I bet you must all have played cards at your homes, right? Have you ever tried to build a house by using the cards? I bet you must have tried at some point, right? Let's build a house of cards and try to visualize a number pattern using the house of cards. So let's try to visualize the number pattern 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and up to some number, right? So we can visualize that number pattern in this house of cards. Try to focus on the vertices of the triangles created in this house of cards. So there's a triangle on the top, right? Then there are two triangles in the next layer, three triangles in the next layer and four triangles in the next layer. Try to observe the vertices of these triangles. So in the top layer, I can see one vertice, right? In the next layer, I see two vertices. In the third layer, I see three vertices. In the fourth layer, I see four vertices. So this is how we have visualized the number sequence one, two, three, and four, right? Now let's try to visualize the number sequence one, three, five, seven, right? So in this number sequence, every term is two apart from the first term, right? So three minus one is two, five minus three is two, seven minus five is two. So all the numbers are two away from the previous number. Try to find all the triangles in this diagram in this house of cards. So there are inverted triangles, right? Which you see in the centers, right? So there's one inverted triangle in the second row, two inverted triangles in the third row, three inverted triangles in the fourth row. So try to calculate the total number of triangles in each row. 
So on the top row, we see only one triangle, right? Which is an upright, upright triangle. In the second row, we have two upright triangles, right? And we have one inverted triangle. So there are three, three triangles in this row. In the third row, we have three upright triangles, right? And we have two inverted triangles. So there are a total of five triangles in the third row. And in the fourth row, we have four triangles which are upright and three triangles which are inverted. So there are a total of seven triangles in the fourth row. So this is how you can visualize the number sequence one, three, five and seven as well. So you can visualize almost any number sequence in some real world scenario. But why are we talking about patterns and number sequences when we have to study about arithmetic progressions? Well, arithmetic progressions are nothing but a very special kind of number sequence. Why? Because all the arithmetic progressions are such number sequences which share some common properties. These properties we'll study about a little more in our later videos, right? So we'll see how we form an AP. Then we'll go on to study about how we find any term in an, in an AP. So suppose if we take a number sequence 1357. So I have the number sequence 1357. Now, suppose I, I ask you to calculate the hundredth term in this number sequence. Now, how do you calculate that? So we'll solve such problems for all the number sequences which classify as an arithmetic progression. Then we'll go on to study about how we calculate the sum of some terms of an arithmetic progression. Once we are through with that, we'll try to use these concepts in some problems and try to solve some real world problems. See you in the next lecture.